sounded great. Whoa, yeah! It's that time of year where London's Hamleys takes on a magical feel. The iconic London toy store becomes a Christmas attraction in its own right. But so far, it's been a less than spectacular year for the toy industry. UK toy sales fell by 2% in the first nine months of this year, but that followed two years of rapid growth, with franchises like Star Wars giving the industry a boost. So, analysts say, Christmas isn't cancelled just yet. We forecast that growth is slowing over the next five years, so not as fast as the previous five years. But it's not all doom and gloom. Um, the toys market remains relatively unaffected by economic fluctuations compared to other retail sectors. Gary Grant is the founder of The Entertainer, a toy chain with 150 stores. He says November was a particularly tough month. So what's going on? Um, so we've a number of things that are challenging. We're seeing um, basic prices increasing. We're seeing um, interest rates increasing, we're seeing fuel at the pumps increasing, so disposable incomes being squeezed. We have a big uncertainty of Brexit, and we voted as a country to come out of Europe, uh, and nobody quite knows what really what that means and how it's going to affect us. Um, so there are a number of factors that are affecting retail, not just toys. So short a queues at the counter. In fact, according to the MPD group, 38% of toy sales this year have been online, and almost half of those were click and collect. For the entertainer, that's not such bad news for physical stores either. So our online business is about uh, a fifth of our overall business. The click and collect part of our business is the fastest growing part of, of our growth this year. British children will receive an average of 11 toys for Christmas, worth around $163. And it's the bargains that have been topping the best sellers lists, with seven of the top 10 most in-demand toys costing under $15. Toys such as Hot Wheels by Mattel and Batman the Movie Minifingers. For these shoppers out picking up their stocking fillers, tighter finances won't hold them back. Are you spending the same amount as usual this Christmas or will you spend less this Christmas? Um, probably a bit more. More? Yeah. I do look for deals all the time, so if I'm smart enough, I spend the same amount and get more stuff. So it's not over yet, and with 34% of yearly toy sales still to come, worth around $1.6 billion, there's still time for a Christmas miracle. Jessica Omery, TRT World. Lutz Muller joins me now live from Williston in Vermont. He's a toy industry analyst and president of the research firm Closters Trading Corporation. Lutz, great to have you on Money Talks. Thank you so much for your time. One of the world's biggest toy makers, Mattel, is guiding its profits lower and sales lower for the coming year. Toys R Us have gone bankrupt. Are these just canaries in the coal mine of what to expect in the toy industry to come? The answer is no. The toy industry is in fact very strong. The UK is an exception from that rule, but internationally, worldwide, you are seeing toy sales grow by approximately 6% this year. Where people are having a problem is that toy sales have shifted from brick and mortar to online. So if you have a store that and not really a very strong online presence, you're taking a beating. So that's happening. Uh, and this is likely to continue. Online toy sales went from something like 10% five, six years ago to something like nearly 50% this year. So that is one trend that is not stoppable, but is likely to sort of flatten out over the next couple of years. Uh, there is absolutely no reason to assume that toy sales in the near future will decline. Everybody keeps telling you that, yes, smartphones are eating into play to, uh, toy playtime. That's not the case. That's rubbish. Basically, what is happening is that screen time in 2011 was about two and a half hours per day for a child up to eight years old. In 2017, it is still two and a half hours. What has happened is that the shift took place from TV to smartphones and tablets. That is definitely the case. I have, however, not seen any evidence that technology has impacted either toy sales 
or play time by children. So that is a fallacy. Mm. That's uh, interesting, so, Lutz, yes. Uh, let me just ask you one more question in there, because uh, how sensitive are toy sales to wage growth? Because that's the other thing that's been happening so far, is that in this recovery, wages have stagnated, disposable incomes have stagnated. How sensitive is the toy industry to these trends? Yes, it is sensitive. Uh, youth have seen that toy sales were stagnant uh, after the big recession, which was sort of about 2007, 2008, and have started to really grow approximately 2013, mm. 2014, uh, when the recession turned into a more positive scenario. What you have is uh, a very large percentage of the population are low income earners who have to make choices and toys are a discretionary item. Uh, so when times are tough, right. people trade down right. uh, in terms of pricing, right. in terms of Lutz, quality. Uh, we're running out of time. I have to ask you one quick question. If you were 10 years old right now, what would be the toy you would want for Christmas? If I was a boy, I would want to have a Star Wars. <laughs> Uh, or a tour, which is doing fantastically <laughs> well. If, if I was younger, okay. I would probably Let's... want to have a Hatchimal. Lutz, uh, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Lutz Miller, toy industry analyst in Vermont.